Hi everybody and welcome back to the Do More Podcast. My next guest today is a gentleman named Professor Dr. Tajuddin Rasti. He's an academic and a columnist, but he's also a proud Malaysian who loves his country very, very deeply. For many years now, I followed his thoughts and ideas on his columns on Free Malaysia Today and I Sin Chu, admiring of a writing style which is in equal parts brave, personal and deeply opinionated. Always writing with a sad on the sleeve, Professor Tajuddin is often a clear outlier in some of his thoughts on the events and issues of the day. I therefore feel honoured and privileged that he agreed to come on the podcast to share his thoughts and principles. Ideals which I think will be of use to many of us in this era of great uncertainty and strife. But before we begin, a little plea to all of you who come by to do more podcasts to please subscribe to the channel because the vast majority of you who do come by and watch my videos have not yet done so. If you feel that my content is of use, if you can, please do go ahead and subscribe. It will help me to continue seeking out the best, brightest and clearest minds to help us navigate a future which is as full of uncertainty as much as there are opportunities. And now, without further ado, dear friends, may I present Professor Dr. Tajin Rusty. Well, Prof, um, it's an honour and a privilege. I've, I've read your columns from, from afar many years yeah, already. And I've always um, been an admirer of, of the way you think about things and your lucid approach to the issues of Malaysia. Mm -hmm. And it's quite an honor for me now to welcome you to the podcast to really talk about your ideas and, and how the kind of events and the kind of like situations that have shaped your opinion. Mm -hmm. So I, I think my first question to you really is, you know, um, when I look at your background and you are ostensibly a professor of Islamic architecture, mm -hmm. but you are a prolific commentator on social issues in Malaysia. So let's not start by talking about how you go from architecture to really a commentator on social issues. What drove you to that position? Well, thank you, Chuang, for inviting uh, me to this uh, podcast uh, to tell that story. <laughs> with to start in the United States, yeah, okay, where I discovered both uh, the idea of democracy and also Islam. So I always say that uh, I became Muslim in the United States. Now, when I was studying architecture, the two things happened to me. Uh, first, I was studying about what is called modern architecture. Everybody seems to know what is modern architecture, those glass boxes or, or, or buildings and things like that. But people don't understand that all those gl uh, glass boxes and things had uh, uh, an origin in the socialist movement in Europe, as well as the, the, uh, uh, the movement about individual freedom, uh, by poets and philosophers in uh, in the in the United States, so people like the architect Frank Lloyd Wright, Louis Sullivan, I read a lot of their uh, their writings, and also in uh, in uh, in Europe would be like uh, Walter Gropius, Le Corbusier. All these people are talking about not about building per se, but how life is, you know, how what I call now the dignity of people, rather than from feudal power or a, a, a very strong government and things like that. So that's one thing that happened. The other thing that happened was that I, I got involved in the uh, Islamic reform movement uh, from some of these Malay students who came and introduced uh, the idea that you know Islam is not just this cultural thing that you um, uh, you learn uh, when you were a, a, a child. It's actually a social force and also what is termed as political force. But the politics, uh, not that much. It was just talking about. Islam is supposed to be something for society. You know, it's it's not about prayers alone. The concept of uh, ibadah or worship is about how you do good, not only to the uh, Muslim but also to others. And so, they propose the idea that Islam should, you know, be uh, something that is an alternative to the idea of a Western construct of democracy and things like that. So it was natural when I was doing my thesis of uh, masters at that time to choose uh, the design of a mosque that is uh, looking uh, uh, more of this idea of a Western democracy, socialist thing. So, so it merges these two. Then when I, I, I got back to Malaysia and worked at UTM, uh, I was sent to Edinburgh to do a PhD. And then uh, I took on the idea of uh, what I call uh, the mosque as a community a center for a modern Muslim society. And I, I embed all these ideas. After that, uh, the uh, fateful day of uh, 1998 came with the uh, sacking of Anwar and the way that he was treated. That basically started my political um, life, uh, looking at Wow, a country can be like that, uh, you know. So <laughs> I was so shocked, and yeah. you know, I, before that I was very proud of Tun Dr Mahathir and uh, and Anwar Ibrahim as the two Malays who were going to take uh, Malaysia 
and the Malay society towards uh, uh, a greater uh, heights in uh, social politics, religion, whatsoever. And so that's where uh, I began to use architecture in the uh, column in the Star. Actually, I was given a column um, called uh, "Architecture Inside Out," and uh, there I introduced the idea of talking about social society and then how it implies into buildings. And so it moved on until after that, I stopped talking about architecture and went straight into uh, education first. And also then slowly into social issues, very religious issues. And then finally, the last one was politics. When, uh, you know, you have to be careful because I'm a government servant and uh, talking politics is something you're not supposed to do that uh, as, a, as a, you know, still a serving uh, officer. Well, I mean, we are still, you know, people and citizens of the country, mm. and we only want the best for the country going forward, right? Mm. It's been 26 years since the mm-hmm. Um So what, what's your opinion about how Malaysia's performed since then? Has, he, has the country gone forward, stayed still, or gone backwards? At the moment, uh, I never thought uh, I'd see the day that uh, actually Anwar becoming Prime Minister. Uh, the 2018 was already a shock that you could actually <laughs> topple down something like the uh, Barisan National. But of course, that time we were ready to forgive uh, Tun Dr. Mahathir. Even, even I, for many years, was really very sad that what he did to Anwar and all that. And, uh, and then when uh, I hoped that he had changed his uh, ways, but uh, apparently he did not. Uh, so uh, that, was, that was something. Lah. And, and then came the Sheraton move that was also quite devastating. And then after that came this uh, the unity government, which also unexpected. And uh, I thought that uh, uh, that this is something that is moving forward. Now, many seem to be saying that no, we are going back, you know, uh, into uh, regression or, or, or a regressive thing. But actually, you know, you you, you need to understand that so many years, uh, decades of uh, instilling some sort sort of a race narrative. And then uh, now the introduction of uh, religious narratives coming into play, these are very, very difficult things uh, to actually uh, deal with. And then uh, also the civil servants being, you know, civil servant in a democracy is supposed to be orang, orang gaji. <laughs> we call it like a servant, you know. I mean, they don't like it when you call them orang gaji, but actually that, that's what it is. I, I always say that if you, if you have a house full of servants, and they are servants, and one day you come home, and then the servants say, untuk kaki tangan sahaja, you know, you cannot park your car in your own house, even though you are the one paying the salary to the servant. So that's the funny thing. Uh, so I think that uh, uh, we are going progressive ahead, but there are things that look as if we are regressing, for instance, like press freedom, and uh, the social media, uh, which is also a very dangerous uh, thing that's happening. So we people are not looking at the context that in order to move, you you need to 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 sometimes look like you are you are going backwards, because you know somewhere along the line there are some kinks and things like that. You need to to straighten out before you start doing something else in, into the into the future. Yeah, I mean certainly to add context to what this whole idea of development is. Um, certainly at an economic level, people mm. have more money than ever before. Yeah. Certainly from a paper um, ed- economic perspective, people have there have never been more graduates, mm. and certainly from a jobs perspective, there's never been more people employed la, with mm. with work and and salary and and business and and all that. So so from from that economic angle, there seems mm. to be you know reasonable progress, mm. but at a social level. Malaysia seems to be kind of like stuck in a time warp of some kind, right? Mm-hmm. And you've written about this with this whole issue with, you know, KK Marts and mm. um, there's been a whole bunch of other things. Mm. I mean, not to get too granular on these mm. issues, but there seems to be some kind of like social, um, th- there seems to be some, some strange thing going on, some p- dichotomy that's going on. Mm. Can you explain that? Well, uh, of course, uh, I would like to uh, use the context of the Malay society because that's the one that I know uh, most of all, rule in academia is talk about things you know. <laughs> don't yeah. don't don't really uh, uh, assume about things that you don't. So, what's happened to the Malay society is something which not many people are aware of. Uh, I I was contemplating on uh, writing an article uh, uh, a Malaysia with the Anwar. You know, meaning that the question here is that people blame the idea of the Islamic reform movement 
that started off this idea of putting uh, religion into politics. Okay, so 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 that might be the cause of why people are so conservative because religion has come to the fore so much. And I wrote in 2018, which not many people uh, notice. I said uh, Islam will be the battle front of the, you know, in the very very near future. And and I was right. So uh, what happened was uh, we have an aging society in the Malay society. I think the Dasa Ekonomi Baru had worked. Even though some people say haven't reached yet, I don't know what they're talking about, and I don't know how to talk about statistics uh, and all that. But I can see things around me, you know, uh, how many people can afford to go for Umrah. You're looking at six hundred thousand people, you know, sometimes not even once, uh, many times they have gone. Now, if six hundred thousand people had helped six hundred thousand families with those uh, money, then then you could see some change. So the 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 the, the aging society. Like a lot of my uh, friends uh, who went to the United States, they couldn't care less about what Islamic reform, whatever. They, you're looking at about 10% of the Malays who were influenced by that. Most are, are, you know, just happy doing whatever it is that they're doing. And these people, when they came back, okay, so they were pointed to me and they got the money that you mentioned just now. There's, there's, there's loads of it. And when they retire, ah, that's where... You know, so you don't realize that when the the, the Muslim <laughs> have their money and they retire, now they found religion, okay. And when I visited my friend, I said, "Oh, oh, so how do you learn this religion? You know, you you never talked about it when we were, you know, together. Uh, so I hired a ustad to come to the to the to the house, because they have all the money, right? And so now the ustads will teach the basic of Islam which is like a, the i call it the children's way of uh, Islam which is ritual first you, you know all, all this uh, aspect uh, what is considered to be so important so values and relationship with others this not part of the curriculum okay and so so you have a whole load of uh, 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 a generation that is uh, retiring and they have money and they are now conservative They, they, they're not. They're not trying to be mean or anything like that. They just want to be uh, good Muslims to go to the <laughs> hereafter. But the the manner of their perspective is very simple. Uh, be with your own kind, so that you are safe from other so-called temptation. So, also defend Islam, you know, because this is the highest reward. So this is the narrative that's been created. The narrative of that uh, Islam being compassionate, being tolerant, being uh, you know accepting this is this is never part of the curriculum, and you could actually go uh, 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 read the, the the Friday sermon. They don't have that in the in the. Uh, it's always about uh, uh, following these rules and that rules and these rules and that rules. Okay, so the the Friday sermon. So you create a whole society that isolates itself uh, from the world, and so by the world means others lah. Uh, so that's why when you have alcohol issue, it explodes. When you have tudong issue, it explodes. Anything, it will explode. Now people also blame politician. I say it's not the politician. You know, you go to the university, so so you can't have a a, a civil discussion about the alternative view of religion. I know this because you know, people come and they are Muslims, Mustafa Akyol, and then the, another 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 uh, scholar came. Not allowed to to uh, to give a talk in the university, and and I'm surprised at that. I mean, university is supposed to be uh, the platform for whatever controversial ideas. Free thought, independent all, thought. All new yeah. ideas are controversial. I see the Prophet Muhammad was the most controversial when he uh, he uh, propagated this idea of a single god when the whole of Ka- of, uh, of Mecca at that time had so many gods, and it can't get more controversial than that. So what? What's wrong with being controversial? As long as you have your argument and 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 so-called evidence, then that should that should be fine with the universities. But you can see how the universities co- close its doors during the Anwar. <laughs> you remember uh, the the reformasi time when he wanted to come into UM, which now got what number sixty uh, in the ranking, <laughs> which to me means nothing when you disallow this kind of thing. And then the the Bruce Gilly incident. Where they couldn't even defend uh, why they invited this scholar and and have him to actually have a discourse, except that to actually follow the minister and things like that. So, so this is uh, uh, what's happening where where the Malay society became conservative because of an aging society. Now that's number one. Number two, this uh, uh, some of these uh, 
those who were affected by the Islamic reform movement, like the Abim, uh, Ikram, uh, and, 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 and have children. You know, how many children? Malays have five, six children. And these children are now grown up. They went to all this Abim school, Ikram school that isolates from the, the others. Okay, so, so you have this generation coming up, having children, uh, you know, even my grand uh, <laughs> granddaughter of five years old shouting Palestinian and all this kind of thing, you know. So because of this, uh, this, 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 this way of uh, the, the children of those so-called Islamic reform people uh, are now having their children into the school. So it's this kind of, uh, of thing that's happening. That's why we're seeing what we are seeing. Then comes the politics. <laughs> it just lights the, the 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 fire to the to the whole thing, and and that's that's why you get this situation. So for someone like me who is like a lay person, lah, you know, mm. when we look at it from outside, it seems really strange, mm. because um, at no other time in 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 history has we have we had more information through the internet, mm. and no other time has travel been more affordable thanks mm. to Air Asia. Mm. And at no other time have we had more access to to knowledge, right? And, and, and you're a good example. When you went to the US, you read all these books on architecture, mm -hmm. you read all these, you had all these exposure to liberal ideas and you mm -hmm. brought it up and then you process it in your own mind. You've even talked in the past about, you know, going to the source of your faith and reading mm -hmm. the, the books of faith written mm -hmm. by, the, by the prophet himself, mm -hmm. right? Rather than having it brought to you by yeah. someone in the middle, mm -hmm. distilled by some, mm -hmm. you know, some academic or some scholar in, in the process. Yeah. And then you get the person's life, which is the, mm -hmm. the children's guide, as you mm -hmm. say, right? But, we 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 still don't have that 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 enlightened class that maybe you know someone like you might have become be and this is strange to me because this is the best time this is the best time to be you know full of ideas and full of knowledge and 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 more the more knowledge you have the more ideas and the more open you are about the, about society and people mm -hmm. and i find that really strange well you can have to look at the uh, the uh, the education system okay and the education system of our school and our universities uh, caters to what I call an industry-based education. Okay, that's that's the main one. Meaning, what job will you have? For me, this is a, a an outdated idea because this started in the 1960s and 70s when we were trying to be modernized with so many factories and so many. This is okay lah. You're trying to create those what I call nuts and bolts of industry. So the nuts and bolts are the engineers, the architect, the lawyers, the the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, doctors, or you know the surgeons and things like that. So so they they were that was then, and and Mahathir was the, the the prime minister who who saw that the industrialization, and and this kind of industrialization also created uh, the uh, the so-called academics. The academics then were given the idea that in order to be uh, hebat or, or great you need to be specialized in your profession. Now, if you read Bart Minister Fuller, Bart Minister Fuller says the, the, the greatest atrocity of education is specialization. Okay, when you specialize something, that's it. That's why in the United States, they change the curriculum uh, to be more, uh, let's say, uh, half of it is okay, lah, your specialization, but the other half would be something that is a bit more multidisciplinary. They even have the double majors and things like that. Here, you, you zero in one straight into this one. So you have an engineer who doesn't know anything about humanities. You have a, 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 a person doing business who doesn't know anything about the environment. You have the religious uh, <laughs> curriculum who doesn't really care much about other things. All right? So they're all specific. And then the professors can't even put two words together about vision of the future, philosophy. Why? Because they, it's very easy to just zoom in on your specialization and then uh, you are rewarded with all this, this thing. A professor should be someone who is a wider thinker. But I've been to professors' uh, interviews, and I saw they are all, you know, silo thinkers. But then I'm one of all the other panels, so I, <laughs> I wouldn't appoint these people. <laughs> but the point here is that uh, they're counting, okay, how many papers, how many this, it's all numbers. You know, in the Senate meeting, it's also about numbers. How many research we have? How many? I'm looking at, yeah, lah. So, but what, but what's happening to the society? Did we solve the dengue problem? Where are we at that? Did we solve the flood problem? Where are we at that? Did we solve our race relation problem? Where are we at that? No, these things are not uh, in any Senate meeting that I have uh, attended. So, so there you see that uh, I once told a journalist that the university is the test of First Nation. 
when the university fails, you know, fails to produce uh, what you have already said just now, an enlightened person who can talk about all these things, habislah, I said, that's it lah. But journalists don't understand. They, they understand politics. You know, politics are the one that govern uh, whether a country is successful or not. I said, no. If it's not the university to produce uh, uh, this graduate who can do what you had said just now, uh, well, that's that's the end of it. Lah. I'm not sure we give this matter enough thought, Prof, because as you say, right, when you're siloed in a certain discipline and you don't think of the repercussions of what you do, is for example, when you look at this, all this innovation and AI, right, mm-hmm. the engineers are amazing. The kind of stuff that they're doing is on a quantum basis by the second. They're just getting better and better by the day. Mm. But they don't realize the repercussions on society mm. because, as you say, la, mm. they become very siloed. Mm. It's the same thing, as you say, with all the other departments in Malaysia, right? Mm-hmm. Um, I, I find it very difficult to understand because you were not so different from other Malaysians. Mm. You, like many Malaysian kids, went overseas, got exposed to American universities, got, had access to the same library, access to the same professors but you developed in a much more open and nuanced and in some way independent way mm-hmm. and then you come back with your own adaptation of what's happening around your world. Mm-hmm. But we don't see that with the people today. I mean, when you look at the last election and we had this green wave, mm-hmm. when you look at the election, the, the voting behaviour, a large portion of that voting behaviour came from the young people mm-hmm. who have been overseas, mm-hmm. who did study in America, who did study in the UK, but they appear to be becoming more conservative. Mm-hmm. And I don't understand that. And I think a lot of people still don't understand that. Yeah, I think this one, first of all, I never agreed to the Undi 18 uh, when it was first proposed. Okay. I said, I know because I teach these people. You know, I know what they are exposed to. My wife is a teacher. I have five children of my own. So I'm very aware of the curriculum. I'm very aware of the university, first the colleges. I'm also aware of PhD candidates. When I ask PhD candidates something uh, about, okay, so you've done this thing, how does it change society? Not only they cannot answer, their supervisors also cannot answer. Because it was never part of their you know, uh, training. Their training is to be specific into this template. I call it template PhD, where you just you know, follow a certain way of doing this, doing this, and then that's it, you know. So so that's why I wrote the article, uh, A Doctor Without Philosophy. So this is the, uh, the, the the manner in which you say that people go overseas. And that's where <laughs> we have to ask the question, what is education for? And, 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 and that's why many people, when you ask this question and you see conferences, they're talking about technology. They're talking about... Uh, uh, the industry, work industry. Huh? Yeah, we talk, never talk about what kind of person eh, that is going to come out of this. Uh, people don't like to talk that. Parents also don't like to talk that because they want their children to get a good job. Okay, That's why many many people in the public, when they say, Prof, what is the problem with this country? Why the politician doing that? Uh, you know, I say, it's not the politician, it's you. <laughs> I said, why me? I said, you never ask your children whether they have Malay friends or they have other friends, whether they have slept in their... Any. You never asked that, did you? You asked, them, what did you get for your subject? You know, that's what you ask and that's what you get. So so this is where we need to have a, a, a real discourse of... I keep complaining that there is no book. If you go to the... Uh, any professor's writing, for the professors don't write book, okay, except me. You know? So uh, they don't... And even if they did, it's all this research kind of a thing, and they don't even know how to talk uh, uh, to the public. Why? Because professors pander only to those who can give them promotions and things like that. So they pander to ministers, pander to this, pander to that. I've I've seen it, you know, to to get somebody to. Uh, there was an incident about um, uh, what's his name, uh, Ramli, Ramli I- Ibrahim. You know him. Is the, the the Malay guy who can That's dance him, yeah. with the yeah. Indian, and he was supposed to give a talk at UTM. And then, uh, at the, and then it was cancelled by the, uh, by the uh, religious department. I said, come on, man. I mean, I mean there are no professors to, to, to actually explain about uh, that art. Uh, because we have a big architecture school that I came from, UT, UTM. So well, what are the professors there doing? Not defending the idea of bringing in somebody. I mean... The weirdest person in the whole university is usually architecture, <laughs> okay? Because we are trained differently. Yeah. You know, we are trained half uh, technology, half uh, history. The other, well, we have three halves. <laughs> the other <laughs> half is about society, <laughs> social, and things like that. And nobody came up to actually defend this. Why? Uh, so it shows that they cannot 
uh, talk about something outside. And I see now most of them are talking about religion in the WhatsApp. They're talking about this, this. When before that, they never talked about it. Now they're talking about how to help Muslims. They're always Muslim. They never help any, anybody else. And then Palestinian comes, you know, Zionists. Uh, this is exactly what I said. The curriculum is a very specific one that says you must be, you know, concerned about your rituals. Uh, so uh, and also help only Muslim. Not <laughs> so the idea of nation in the Islamic reform. We talked about if you look, uh, I know Ibrahim's uh, writings and speeches. He always talks about the global and the uh, the wider perspective of things. Don't talk like that in front <laughs> of any Malaya. They'll say you are liberal or you are society or you are all this kind of thing. And you can check the Friday sermon. They're all very, very closed in terms of uh, their thinking. I'm not saying that it's wrong, but well, you create a society that is closed. Itu saja. Does hmm. it get more tempurung from here on in? Uh, or does it get better? What's your yes, sense? Yes, yes, it will because uh, strangely enough, because of the non-Muslim, not because of the Muslim. The Muslims are already doing their part to put themselves in the tempurung. But the non-Muslims are also a problem. And I been writing about this. First, I'm losing friends from my race. Now I'm losing friends from the <laughs> other side. So, so okay, well, that's fine. Um, you see, the <laughs> the non-Muslim don't understand what I just talked to you about. Uh, how the evolution of the Malay mind. You, they may, might be some of them really don't like Anwar Ibrahim because of what they, they say that he introduced Islam, and that's why I could prove that if even Anwar was not born and never existed, we would be still in the same situation. I'm reminded of a book written by this uh, consultant to the CIA who's a professor, A World Without Islam. Well, I thought he was going to be derogatory about Islam. Actually, he's doing a favor. He said, "Hey, you're blaming Islam when." All of the problems of the world have deep-rooted geopolitical situation which you don't understand. You're just using it. And, well, uh, I don't really uh, uh, support him in that because I know a lot of Muslim punya mind. But that's okay lah. So, 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 so that is where the, uh, number one, the, uh, the non-Muslims would uh, be very impatient. Okay? For instance, the, the issue of Anwar with the witness, witnessing of the boy, the Indian boy, Straight away, there were two uh, statements from uh, like the Kuala Lumpur Chinese Assembly Hall. Never check, never bothered to check and just make a statement. Say, oh, shouldn't be doing that, shouldn't be doing this. I had to explain. I said, this is, uh, this is just witnessing. You know, if the boy asked me, I would witness also. So it's part of a, of a Muslim responsibility. You cannot, you cannot orang kata apa, uh, refuse it. You know, if somebody, is, it is our responsibility. So I know I was just being a normal Muslim. But she said, oh, you are prime minister, cannot. Who, who are you to 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 talk about Islam when you sendiri tak tahu what it is? So so that is not just insulting, but it's, it's, uh, it's something that actually uh, separates us. So when you say, are we going to get even worse? Yes, because of this uh, uh, refusal to, uh, to, to, to acknowledge what is happening with the Malay society and, and the different kinds of Islam. I gave a, a talk and said there are... There are several kinds of Islam. There is the cultural Islam, there is the institutional Islam, there is the political Islam, and now there is this Madani Islam. If you don't understand all these four, then then a lot of things, uh, what you're going to respond will be the wrong one. And this is a huge problem at the moment. It already sounds like a huge problem because we're already so siloed. I mean, mm. my, my time when I was kids, mm. we were just so open and friendly to everybody and we didn't have any idea of race or religion. We just played among each other. Mm. Today, it's incredibly siloed and it's, and it's getting more and more siloed. How does it all pan out, Prof? I mean, you've been around you know, a long time, right? And yeah. uh, you might have a fair idea mm. because we've all got children. Mm. How do we advise our children? How do we see the, the world you know, evolving over the next 20, 30 years? Yeah, so that's where uh, people uh, making jokes about Mandani but never really understanding it. I'm not trying to be a salesman of Anwar Ibrahim, you know, I mean, I, I, I supported, uh, I don't like to the idea of supporting people. And if you ask me who's my favorite politician, I'll say Dr. Mahathir, you know, but if you ask me, are you going to vote for him? No. <laughs> you know? So I, I understand the man, okay? And, and, and so this is where uh, uh, we need to look at that. Now, when before the Islamic reform system, you have the people like Tunku Abdul Rahman, you know, and even if you look at the uh, the parliament building at the top, there would be a bar, 
I was told there was a bar for alcohol, you know, during those times. I read Lee Kuan Yew's uh, Singapore story. I know <laughs> when he told stories about all these things. And uh, uh, when the Islamic reform came, uh, the enemies of the Muslim in the Islamic reform, not, not, not the non-Muslims, okay? it was the cultural Muslims like Piramli and, 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 and even Tunku Abdul Rahman. Because he drank and then uh, and all these things, so 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 that's how it began. But if you look at the deeper part about uh, the philosophy of uh, Islam and society and all that, if you read, if you care to read deeper, actually it would actually, <laughs> strangely enough, go back to the idea of Islam as a as a as a a, a personal uh, religion. You see, that's what happened. You know, in the cultural time, it's a personal thing. Then Islamic reform came; it's a political thing. And I thought that was better because uh, uh, I think Anwar was trying to push the Malays from talking about race, supremacy, you know, to something about Islam which can be shared by, because, you know, it's part of the Christian religion, part of the Semitic. Even this simple thing about uh, Islam being part of the Semitic uh, history is, is lost to most Muslims. Why? Because they're getting on the bandwagon of Paket Tudong and going to see Ustas and all this kind of thing. And uh, and they don't really uh, uh, have a deeper understanding. And the Ustas couldn't care less to, to, to deepen this. They're getting you know invitation left and right and making money here and there. And uh, people are getting more religious. So 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 there's a lot of money in, 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 in that. And there are a lot of, uh, I see a lot of Muslims with a lot of pension money spending, you know, on pilgrimage or, or umrah and things like that. And and what do you call it uh, now? The, the fashion uh, uh, touring all the so-called quote-unquote religious places. Yeah, <laughs> you know. So yeah, never sense. reading, but touring. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so nothing wrong with it. But then when you don't, uh, you know, go no. into yeah. because number one, they don't even want to read. All you have to do is call the ustad. The ustad ni boleh tak? Have you ever seen this show called Tanya lah Ustad? I say, why well, you have Tanya lah Ustad? Tanya professor lah. You know, uh, but then the the, the question, uh, you can see the level of question that they entertain. Uh, well, uh, it's a uh, it's a uh, it's it's very it's low. It's not unimportant. It's just that it's never reaching into the high level. Now, if you look at uh, people like Osman Bakar and Istak. I have to say this. <laughs> they are talking. If you go there, then you will see. Oh, an Islam that is open, tolerant, accepting. But then I ask my friend, "Well, where are you in this podcast or in this <laughs> web show?" But you know, they won't appear because uh, they think that this is like a uh, uh, lower standard, lah. You know. And I said, "Look, the social media is taking over the 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 the, the policy making of the cabinet." I said in an article the. The, the 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 cabinet uh, and their policies are no longer uh, 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 powerful okay it is the social media and the mosque these are the two things that will control the narrative of the country you know what's right and so if the academics do not come down to the level of <laughs> this kind of discussion uh, we are lost lah who's going to explain things and open this up you know um, but then also many of the academics don't even know how to explain and many of them also are just now studying about religion and how many more years they would have so they would always be uh, in the on the conservative side i've seen this when uh, a group of professors uh, agreed with this you know the, the kampung china issue uh, and then the bak kuteh issue oh they're talking about uh, these professors you know say oh tak cukup warisan ada babi and then you cannot uh, what what is this this is this is heritage you know this belongs to all of us okay and the prophet never say anything about the heritage of the arabs Okay, I know because I read the prophet. These people don't, you know. So that, that's why they 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 assume from uh, the their their the lectures that they they oh they actually ask the ustad ustad ni bak kuteh boleh mana boleh ustad you know. <laughs> of course, the ustad they didn't even have the reading uh, uh, necessary for that. You know, one of your columns I read with interest was um, recently. I think you were asked. I think or you you wrote about this advice and hereafter, mm -hmm. and I think the issue is. Why have you taken it upon yourself to do all this talking and writing and being very open and, in fact, very courageous with your views? Mm -hmm. Because obviously, some people won't like what you say, lah. Mm -hmm. You know, but you also you've you've, you've posited that you're doing this because it's you feel it's your social right, mm -hmm. so that at least you you did what you could to try and right societies, what you view as society's wrongs, mm -hmm. before you mm -hmm. you know go on, lah. You know, mm -hmm. and maybe you can talk about that. Uh, 
Well, there are two things. Number one, if you were to read uh, one of the uh, most important uh, ayat in the Quran, it says that uh, faith is uh, such and such and such. And then it says, and helping the orphans, helping the poor, helping the wayfarer. That w- was one part of it. And I never saw anything that it says it must be Muslim. <laughs> okay? So I said I could take this and f- design a society or design a whole city. Just a single, a single. So that is that is number one. The other thing is the prophet saying that uh, God said, uh, "I was uh, hungry uh, one day and you didn't feed me." And uh, uh, the son of Adam said, ah, "You are God. How can I feed you?" Well, it, well, if you were uh, feeding a hungry person or a poor person, then you will find me there. And again, there's no mentioning whether you are Muslim or, or non-Muslim. The other thing is also about uh, uh, justice. And it's always talked about in the Islamic reform. Justice is is uh, colorless and 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 raceless and things like that. So uh, the teaching that I had from the Islamic reform uh, movement as well as, is that uh, all you have to do, uh, the responsibility of a Muslim is to speak what you know. And this is the unfortunate thing that I read so many hadith. Okay, <laughs> that's the unfortunate thing. You know, sometimes my wife would say, you know, "Why do you want to write like this? You write like this, you know, our relatives also don't like you." You know, things. I said, my problem is that I read the hadith. Okay, so I know something different than than these other people. So it's I need to explain. If not, I will have to answer in the hereafter. You don't know the hadith and you don't know the perspective. That is okay for you. Okay, so uh, and then I know other people who also knows what I know, but they're not. Speaking saying up. anything yeah. so so who is left you know I don't want to be in this position but then I, I'm waiting for somebody to answer Hadi Awang nobody's answering I'm waiting for somebody to answer Akmal Saleh nobody there to to, to answer Why nobody I mean uh, scholars who are actually more uh, better than, 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 than I am uh, in this and also the so-called clerics and things like that but none, come, none comes forward so I'm just I'm uh, just Uh, trying to clear my myself before I die, and so that I don't have to be questioned in the hereafter. Why you know this? Why you didn't say this? You know, because that will be one of the question to the scholars. Okay. Yeah, because I'm not a rich person. There, there are three three things: a rich person, the leader, and the scholar. This uh, will be asked first. So, <laughs> so, so, so I'm not rich, <laughs> and I'm not a leader. So, well, I'm just trying to pass on uh, uh, my responsibility there. That that's the reason. So you got five kids, Prof, mm-hmm. um, and I, I th- well, I've, had, I've met at least one of them, mm. and and that one, f- you know, child of yours was was very intelligent, is very intelligent, um, knew her years ago. I don't know where she's gone now. Um, you you seem to have done a very good job of raising your five kids. Uh, one of them is here as well. Mm. What what do you tell them? What kind of wisdom or what kind of principles do you impart to them about how to navigate this world uh, that we live in? Mm. Okay. <laughs> well, the, this the one short, is the uh, yeah. Version, <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> and number one, uh, I I instill in them the love of reading. Uh, so Very important. my any Brighton books and things like that. You know, reading any Brighton book is not about uh, making your English better. It's actually uh, knowing another culture, okay, and being able to accept uh, the other culture. That's number one. And number two, uh, um, of course, uh, being parents. My wife uh, is a bit more traditional in her way of thinking about Islam. So, so some of our children uh, we sent to religious school, okay, by, by this uh, Ikram or Abim, okay. Uh, but then after three years, I said enough. We must put them back in the public school, and that got into an argument with my my wife about that. I said no, no, that's not the way to do because I'm 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 the head of the family, okay. So uh, I tried to reason with her, but I know she didn't like it. Okay, she, well, then they're not going to wear the tudung, you know, that sort of thing. And, and and she was right. And at the end of the day, now when we're already old, I said, look, yeah, your 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 daughters uh, only one of one of them wear the tudung, but all of them are here. All of them are here with us. Uh, if I had, uh, you know, she was complaining that I I was not too much of a disciplinarian, okay, yeah, or or that uh, I didn't take away their allowance and things like that. No, I say I I don't believe that. I believe that the path of spirituality is each person's own. But there is a belief in the Islamic society. If your children or your daughter, you know, does this, you know, unlawful thing, then you are also going to answer. I said it cannot be. I said the idea that 
everyone is uh, supposed to be responsible for their own fate in the hereafter you will be alone and when god asks you this question you cannot say well i did this because uh, hadi awang said that <laughs> not going to work okay god will say to hadi awang uh, did you actually say that yeah lah but then he has to think he supposed to think why did he follow me uh, this is the defense uh, 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 in 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 the hereafter that's how uh, many people don't understand that they think that they are they can uh, get away with okay well i i, I listen to this ustaz no you cannot do that you 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 have to stand on your own and this is where uh, i'm different than others because i understood that all right but others they think that okay as long as i follow this ustaz i'm okay All right, and so if there's any problem, even if you were to ask that person this, this, then they say, well, I have to refer to that person. So that's how it is, okay. And 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 I told the the children that uh, um, you know the the love of reading and also uh, uh, the idea of not uh, looking at others uh, naturally because they they were saved in one sense from the traditional way of. Uh, of of training uh, uh, children to be good mus quote unquote good muslim good muslims unfortunately turns to be bad malaysians okay and so bad global citizens because they form a silo and i've heard this from my my uh, 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 children's friends when they any issue uh, when they talk about all these things they always go back to race okay now they go back to religion a very small <laughs> thing that they know they will just go back to that and we are in deep trouble narrow construct for sure yeah definitely mm. yeah so we know you're still a i mean i think you csi right yeah. um so when you talk to students and you know if 18 20 years old what what is what are they talking about what what worries are they discussing with you what are their hopes and fears what what can you tell us about that first thing uh, if you want to find out about the world never go to a university okay <laughs> Because the university has been uh, constructed to the point of industry base. Yeah. I've been a professor for 37 years. I enjoy being an academic, but I spend 90% of my time outside of the university. I have the least carbon footprint <laughs> because I don't <laughs> go to the university. There is absolutely nothing there. Okay, there's nothing there. What do you mean nothing? Nothing. What's what's the, what's the discourse? Or oh, the discourse is how many research that you did and how many. Yeah. Every time I get a, a a WhatsApp is this research that nothing nothing worth about where we are as a society and things like that. There's nothing there, okay. And why there is nothing? Because if you want to invite city kasih, so you got to have the permission, <laughs> okay. Well, why should you have permission? I'm professor. If you want to invite Chuang or city kasih, that's my damn business, man. You know, I mean, I'll I'll carry the responsibility, but no, the university has the last say. So that's why I don't I don't uh, so when you talk about the students what do they want to know when is the assignment due you know and and uh, I've I've asked this question to I've been asked to interview uh, for valedictorian you know those those excellent people I asked this question and usually my question nobody can answer lah I said uh, can you tell me one thing that you learn from another faith or another culture just just that Another one, uh, can you tell me a good book that you have read that actually changed your life? <laughs> Tidak juga. Okay. Uh, uh, can you uh, tell me uh, uh, whose house have you slept in, you know, uh, uh, to uh, of a, a different culture? Yeah? This is the question they are asked. Other other panelists will ask, oh, what are you going to do with your careers when you are working? <laughs> This kind of question. I'm looking at the 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 person, okay, and that who's going to lead and, and and become a citizen and a human being. So so that's why I said that nobody's asking uh, the the real question. I'm not going to say right question. That's very ambiguous. What's the real question that we want? And that's where uh, I gave a talk about how I see a whole different education and university. Uh, because uh, I don't take data from uh, you know the normal way, I just read what's ha- what's happening out there, and I read what's being said. I watch what is not being said, and I s- look at who is saying, and I also look at who is not saying, and that is enough for me to conclude. <laughs> you know, this society is like this, and this is the problem, and this is this the uh, the uh, the solution. I have the solution for it, but apparently uh, nobody can 
think of the way that 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 we are thinking. I love that data triangulation process. Not mm. many people do it, but it's one of the most effective, and it's mm. also the most cost effective as well. Mm. Um, but it's also very um, useful. Yeah, research they like to use Google Forms. Yeah, I said no. no. You give me Google Form, I'll, I'll throw it back in your face. I say go and do the interview or do participant observation. Be part of that case studies that you are looking at. Here you get a PhD with all Google Forms. What? What? You know, people answer in Google Forms. How can they they they, they be very, very very clear on that? So we are disassociating with ourselves from actually the the, the the research base. So if Malaysia is becoming more narrow, mm. more conservative, mm. more siloed, um, what happens to Malaysia? How would you advise your children and their children um, to navigate this world? Do they stay here? Do they try and change the world? Do they move elsewhere? If they do move elsewhere, where do they go to? Um, you know. As the head of the family, as I am as well, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. How do we navigate this? What do we do? Well, if you, uh, for most of uh, uh, the, the adults that have children that are already in universities or going to universities, uh, I, I advise, I said, mm, leave the country, you know, because it's not going to be very safe for them uh, for the next, uh, I'd say, 15, 15 years. And uh, for the adults, I I try to engage them with the idea of building a parallel Malaysia. I call it, you know, a parallel Malaysia is a very simple idea of because you have the uh, the internet, and then we can have uh, our WhatsApp group or whatever it is, and then we can have uh, this virtual community of uh, what 10,000 or whatever, uh, where we can actually uh, speak to one another in certain ways and learn from one another. I say everybody must learn. You know, a lot of people just want to blame. You know, the, where I I once did a a a a a, a seminar, a private seminar on Islam and nation building. And one of the question, a prof, how come most of our attendees here are, are non-Muslim? Uh, shouldn't there be more Muslim? No, I said this lecture is for you. You are supposed to change. <laughs> <laughs> you know, so um, uh, this is the, where uh, this message needs to be. All of us need to change. You see, when my wife and I argue with my our children, I told my wife, look. We are older, we are wiser, and we are more spiritually higher. So we shall make the first move. Usually, I ask my wife, lah, you know. <laughs> so she would go and talk, and then things would would would, would go on. And so the point here is that in two conflicts, somebody has to, you know, come to the center by uh, accepting some sort of. It doesn't mean that you're wrong. Everything. I mean. How can you be right about everything, and how can you be wrong about everything? That that's but what being human is all about. So because we are older and wiser, so we make the first move, all right? So that's where I said to a lot of this uh, 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 participant: Look, if you get news about Islam or any issue, make sure you get the right facts first. Do you have nobody to ask? You ask me, okay? Secondly, don't go and pass it along, yeah, you know? and then and don't make comments. On things in a derogatory manner, or even something like Allah Wat lah, this Muslim always think like that, you know, uh, like the recent uh, uh, SPM result, you know, mathematic 80,000 fail. Look at uh, somebody gave a oh, you see uh, a lot of religious studies, you know, less mathematics. I can go and argue to him. Were you dis- dispelling the idea of the teachers? Uh, you know, how how are they at teaching mathematics? All right, and then uh, have you looked at the curriculum? You know, isn't this a bit Overboard. There's so many, so many reasons for that, and 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 you're going to zero in close to the to that. That's. I'm not trying to defend it. I'm just trying to say that's not critical, lah. Okay. And then in this uh, uh, age of so-called anonymous commentary, yeah, have you seen some of these uh, co- comments? Or what a moronic minister. The minister is only one year, and you call him moronic. <laughs> and 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 what is Anwar doing? He's not doing this. He said lulu macam tu, and then he. I said the rule about criticism is very simple. You must understand the context of the thing that you are criticizing. Number one, number two, can you do any different if you were in that position? So if you cannot be a prime minister who can handle your party and have to handle huh, your enemies as partners, don't talk lah uh, about this kind of thing. You can raise the issue. But don't go and say things like, "Oh, Anwar is not doing this. Anwar is backtracking. Anwar is this. Anwar is that." You tak tahu apa pun berlaku, and you didn't really give the dignity of 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 being in that position. Correct. For me, that is the rule about criticism. Correct. If not, I wouldn't. That's why you ask about economy. I said, "I'm not going to answer about economy because I don't really know much about it." Yeah. 
You said that uh, you admire Tun Mahathir, the politician, mm-hmm. but you wouldn't vote for him. Mm-hmm. What do you mean by that? Well, Tun Dr. Mahathir is a, is a, is a great uh, individual. Number one, uh, he reads a lot and he, he knows, uh, uh, you know, once you read, then you have ideas. <laughs> you don't read, you depend on your ustad lah. Okay, that's the 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 problem. And then uh, he he is a, a person. Uh, he's the only person that uh, I know who can actually uh, uh, well stand eye to eye with the with the royals, you know, and say something that none of us dare to say anything. Okay. Um, then he also said things like you know, if you cut off this person's hand, how's he going to find work? That. <laughs> Anybody else who says that <laughs> is going to land in prison, okay? So he could stand, and he even said, "Why is there a persatuan ulama? You know, you're trying to celebrate yourself as very clever people. <laughs> I mean, this kind of is true, okay? So he also is the one who says that Malays have not been using the 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 you know the the facilities given to them, and so they they are not reading, they're not. Uh, he he encourages this hard work and all that. I can go on and on about the the various, but the problem with Mahathir, <laughs> uh, boy, uh, he can lie at you right in the face, and he can uh, be so zalim. Eh? Uh, zalim is the word, okay? That's why the Maha Zalim, you know. Raja Petra, I've never seen somebody like that. Okay, so uh, his his heart, I I think his intellect, he has intellect, but I don't think he has a heart. This is He's my. He's a very complex character. Yeah. So um, you've almost come about turn in your career. Mm. Um, I think uh, well, I'm not sure whether you want to talk about it, but basically you're now on the board of governors at, mm. at UKM, mm-hmm. uh, appointed by you know uh, the mm. Prime Minister Anwar himself. Mm-hmm. You know how how would you try and you know do your bit, you know, to try and help the system, reform the system, mm. reconstruct the system. Uh, at the UKM, what I wanted to do was uh, to actually um, number one, hoping to give uh, some talks to the academics. You know, uh, firstly, of course, you want to talk to the academic. You have to talk about their careers, and so to talk about their careers, I wanted to talk about a different KPI. And that's what I did. Uh, and in in a recent, in a recent uh, what they call sharahan, uh, I I talked about it, but unfortunately, not many academics came. Okay, um, so I did a YouTube on it uh, because they didn't record it because yeah. they were probably afraid of what I might say. And uh, then I asked uh, a few uh, because there's an architecture department there uh, because I also have set up that architecture department in the UKM. So I some of those lecturers are my former students. So I said that uh, you know you help me with uh, organizing all these forums and all that. And quite recently, one of the uh, very very senior professors uh, actually contacted me and said, "Prof, we we need to change the university." And I was surprised. Wow, I have a friend. I said, "Actually, <laughs> you know." And uh, and and I think we have to go slowly. That that's one. The other things that you know in UKM they pride in Bahasa Melayu. You know, I, any lectures or whatever it should be. And it's the UITM they speak English. Mm. <laughs> UKM they speak Malay. This only, yeah. Ah, right. So I have no problem with that. But then I asked permission to speak in English simply because I wanted to bring the 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 the, the non Malays in, you know, because the non Malays don't really like Bahasa Malaysia and all that. So so I just want them to mix with the uh, the Malays in the uh, in the university. So same thing with Anwar. You can't change the university overnight. Okay. When Mazli was the minister, I told him, uh, hey. Why don't you ask uh, them to, you know, they, 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 they put the higher education ministry with the education. I said, this is too much, man. The, the, the ministry of education that takes charge of school is useless, I said. Anywhere or anything you do uh, is like a quagmire uh, and, 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 and you're walking in a, 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 a minefield. It'll explode, okay? You cannot change the, the, the school system. Because four hundred thousand teachers, civil servants, and all that, they'll come after you, and and you won't get anything done. But if you can just remain a higher education minister, we can change that. We can change it because change must come from the uh, the the universities because the universities train the professionals and the future leaders, and also the teachers of the teachers later on. So if universities cannot change, and then what are you talking about change unless you can be uh, a military uh, dictator uh, then you can do that lah okay so that one or you can be like Lee Kuan Yew or, or or somebody who you know can really 
have a what you call a kuku besi, mm. uh, you know, an iron hand uh, like that, uh, then you can change. But then will it last? I don't know, because that is a force change. But maybe maybe we need a force change. I don't know. But if you cannot control the university or 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 or, or give it a, a new vision and a way forward, and the and the and the university fraternity agrees to that. I I don't think there's any any anything can be done because we can see politics cannot change, not because they don't want to change. Even Anwar wants to change a lot of things, but he cannot. You know, I can see him stuck. All right. So, but uh, 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 then the alternative is that they don't want to change. That is a wonderful system mm. uh, for them. Uh, and then Anwar wants to change, and this non-Muslim talking this like that, talking like that, ah, susah lah. So, so I think the universities need to be reformed, and the non-Muslims need to have a different attitude. Okay, if you're not going to support uh, Anwar and Mandadi government, who are you going to support? A simple question. Or oh, you're not giving us much of a choice, lah, bro. <laughs> Hello, this is life. I <laughs> thought <laughs> life was like that. You know, that's that's what you get, and that's what you work with. Yeah. Okay, I'm not saying that. <coughs> you know, uh, if, if you if you ask me, uh, I'm very frightened with the idea that uh, Anwar is doing all the talking, and I'm not looking at other people philosophizing about. You know about the future and all that. So, what happens if he dies? Okay, and and which which who who, who, next, who yeah. is the yeah. next person? You know, are you talking Saifuddin? <coughs> are you talking uh, uh, Rafizi? I I know these people. Okay, so same thing with Amana. Uh, he's supposed to be the vanguard of Islam and all that. Who's the the next uh, young person? But in Amno um, in uh, uh, PN or or PAS, we know who are the young. The young uh, uh, generation of leaders, but in this group, siapa dia? Saya pun tak tahu. Okay, so so this is a a a a, a worrying thing, and that's why I said that with the parallel uh, Malaysia, we could actually do quite a lot of things. Because as Bak Minister Fuller says, don't fight the system, or spend your energy on the established system. Build a new one. Use your energy to build a new one to the point that it overwhelms the the older one. I mean, how else am I supposed to think? That's why I, I'm keep keep writing because I look at it. If they're not going to use the things that I've already said, well, there's no way to change it. So what's next? Stop writing or or build something new? Uh, so that's why I try to do is just to bring something new. I'm not sure you mentioned this earlier, Prof. But one of the things you said, in addition to building a parallel Malaysia, hmm. was for you know parents of school-going kids and university kids uh, to not come back to Malaysia to leave the country. Hmm. Right? I'm not sure whether you meant that, hmm. but if they did, and if you did mean it, wh- where would you advocate them going? Which country would you think has a optimistic, you know, um, good future where it's just hmm. got good governance and responsible leaders? Well, uh, when I said leave the country, I didn't say leave forever, did I? <laughs> so I said a strategic okay, uh, movement. Strategic, strategic means, means you you leave, but you don't leave in a sense that I mean over there you know you got the internet and everything you could form your own groups, learn what you can from from the the, the best of whatever you have because I I've been in the United States six years in Edinburgh three years so I was a minority, okay, but I always said I I'm always a minority even among Malays I'm a minority <laughs> okay so. Uh, so being minority is no big deal for me. I'm 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 like that. So so you you're going out there, get what you can. I mean, don't look at just money. I mean, good look at the values and things like that. But also try to learn about your the history of your place, the history of the different cultures. This is the thing that we we fail. I don't even know how to say hi in Kadazan. Come on, salam jani. I mean, next generation also don't know how to say hi in Kadazan. I mean, when are we going to <laughs> instill that the idea of uh, uh, what this is the religion of the Iban people before this? You know, uh, we don't know their heritage and things like that. So that's why I wanted to, if I could, I could change the history curriculum and the geography curriculum to be more more society based rather than all the numbers of uh, one is the numbers of. Uh, What is the year, and then the other one is how many tons of things? You know, like the geography that we learn. We never learn about the people. Okay, so uh, but then again, as I said, you cannot change the school system. All right, uh, but we could have uh, camps where our children can come together, sleep together, eat together. All right, and then we could have this. We we have to do ourselves. I even said, look, we got so many million s, put it in one hundred million, and I want to give scholarships to to Malays to study in China. Huh? I want to give 
a scholarship to Malaysia to study in in in, in places where there are no Islam. Let them feel uh, being a minority, and then I want to give to non-Malays <laughs> scholarship to study about Islam and study about Malay society. You don't have to be a Muslim. Uh, of course, the parents will say, "Nanti dia tak kerja apa?" I mean, <laughs> come on, man! You got all these politician uh, aides and things like that, and the future leader. How are we going to? How we, we don't even change the system, okay? And uh, lastly, I, I, I once, uh, you know, I wrote for, I write for Sinchu, and I asked the editor. How many Chinese newspapers are there? Say something like twenty or twenty-five, something like that. How many has this English section? Well, four or five. How many has a Malay section? So said, problem. if you problem. don't have a Malay section, I guess, then how can you fault the Malays for thinking that you're trying to hide something? Same problem. Same problem. Uh, so I said, so so we need to build the bridge where the politicians don't want to or fail to do, and where universities don't even care to do. So you and I. And some rich person need to actually reorient Malaysia by retraining the next generation, and hopefully this next generation then find themselves in uh, in certain uh, places where they then change. We we cannot change overnight, and we cannot definitely change the present system. So we build the parallel one. That's that that was my message. Okay, that was fantastic. Parting thoughts, Prof. Mm. Before I let you go. How would you like to be remembered? Because part part of the reason I do this podcast is mm. to I try and seek out you know who I believe are credible, lucid, rational, clear thinking individuals to try and impart with their principles so that people can make better decisions through the kind of principles that you espouse, right? Mm-hmm. So so obviously I I do think you're one of these people. Mm. Um, how would you like to be remembered? How how would you like people to <clears throat> kind of like navigate this world you know through your principles? Mm. I started uh, to actually concentrate on the Malays first because that's where I come from, <coughs> and I wanted them to be uh, uh, good Muslims because being good Muslims means you are good to all. That's the thing, and I, I think I fail at that, so <laughs> I won't be remembered for that. Then I said, mm, okay, well, if the Malays are not going to learn that, then I'm going to teach uh, the non-Malays how to deal with the Malays. Even I'm planning a book on, you know. Why why Muslims think like this and where it comes from and how and you, you deal well, with that? Well, when once you write that book, we have to come into the podcast <laughs> and talk about it. <laughs> so this is book for the world. I'm not going to talk about Malaysia anymore. You know. So so the point here is that uh, I wanted to be remembered as a person who who uh, tries his best uh, to explain that being a Muslim and being a good person. You know, uh, regardless of whatever religion, because I read all the Bhagavad Gita, all the the the, the Bible and things like that, and I I love it all, and all of them have helped me to become who I am. Uh, some people say sesat and things like that. That's your business. You know, in order to to in academia, when you do literature research to find your topic, that is where you are sesat, and that be- makes you the scholar, uh, because you can stand on the on the on the foundation that. Uh, You've been to here, been to there, and you know this way and this direction, things like that. So I like to be remembered as a person who uh, tried to show that uh, Islam, being a Muslim, being a Malaysian, and being a global citizen is just one and the same. Professor, hmm. you're incredible. Lah. Long may your thoughts prevail, and hopefully uh, more than one person just learn something from this amazing hour that you spend with me. Thank you very much. Thank you for inviting. Thank you. <laughs>